clubhouse. I know I'm stretching it a little bit, but I think uh, Pedroia caused a little di disturbance on, on the club. It lasted a long time, you know, when he answered the thing in spring training, you know, about how they do things here. But that was a kind of, no, not right. You know, they started the ball rolling. Do you think he got thrown into a burning fire, or the atmosphere was a product of his questions? Well, that's a good question, because Bobby, I know, he's very volatile, and <coughs> If everything ran smooth, he would have found a reason to screw it up. He, he just the way, that's just the way he, he manages. You know, he's uh, very sharp with the tongue, knows baseball very well. But you got to you got to be a special player uh, to to be around him. Like I don't think he meant very uh, badly about some of the remarks that he uh, talked about. Like he mentioned that uh, that statement with the third baseman who made a couple of errors in one inning. And as he walked off the field, uh, Bobby said to him, you know, nice inning, wasn't it? You know, whatever his name uh, No, the third baseman, the young man, you know, Brooks. And I think he took it the wrong way. You know, he took it as a criticism. But knowing Bobby, it's one of his ways to get a, a kid motivated or loosen him up and say, hey, other guys had a bad innings too. You know, then the Euclid thing I couldn't understand. Uh, Euclid, I, I don't know. Uh, I met him several times. Pretty decent guy, very intense. And uh, if he demonstrated to Bobby that he looked like he's not there, you coaches know when the kids aren't in the game. And apparently, spring training started that way for Euclid. Things just weren't running smooth. I think he had a little, uh, little banged up body. Uh, so they say, and so they, it was one of his comments saying they didn't like his head, had his heart and soul starting off the season. The innocent remark, Euclid took it the wrong way, and there we go. You know, that's it. Then, you, of course, you got Beckett. Uh, no one can explain what's wrong with Beckett. I mean, he's got great stuff, and it just, it just didn't happen for him. But uh, I think he was a part of that personality, and unfortunately, he had. had uh, Lester and Buckholz for, for time being followed him and they thought they were doing the right thing. Obviously not. And so they all just found out. What do you think about the big trade the Red Sox had in August? Oh, I think, uh, I, I don't know much about the, the, the basic reasons for it. Uh, obviously it came out that they did, that they did save a lot of money, which I think they'll spend a lot of, a lot of it uh, the, the, this winter. But as we said earlier, uh, the front office is so involved with so many other things uh, other than baseball. Whether the, uh, Mr. Henry needed the money or whatever reason, and they did save a lot of money. And unfortunately with Crawford, I know uh, former, some of my former players are, are retired in Florida. They say he's one heck of a player, but he didn't show here. You know, they watched him down, down Florida. He's one hell of a player. Never, never, and some things like that happen. And then he got hurt, all that stuff. And, uh, I heard the reason also they made such a such a great trade was that uh, Dodgers definitely wanted our first baseman, Gonzalez. But it was like blackmail. They said, you won Gonzalez and Beckett, you got to take him. And that was kind of the package that, that was behind all this stuff. And, uh, and that's the way it Right now, not too exciting. You know, things will change. Things will change after the series. We don't know what what uh, free agents are out there, are they available, and for what kind of money. Uh, what positions do you uh, do you go after? Uh, do you trade Ellsbury? Maybe you do with the right package. Our catching, uh, they all rave about it, but I, I was very uh, one. Uh, unhappy, and uh, not that I care, they care about my, my feelings, but the point is, Longway, Langway is, uh, was supposed to be our best prospect in the Pukatakum. And he hit a 170, but he hit a 170, I forgot. And just, uh, maybe he just got, once you get in that, in that cycle, you just can't get out. You just can't get out. Just don't buy it, as you all know. And the shortstop, I don't know, he, he'll ever hit a major league pitcher. 
So those two guys, uh, they're counting on him, and we still don't know. Um, the Mill Brooks, he looks like he's going to be be good, but it's another year. We, we get going. I, I always said though, uh, I I I see Joe Morgan a lot. I see Frank Malzone a lot. Uh, and we talk about. Uh, actually, we're all playing. We all say how much better we are. You know. We are. <laughs> but. Uh, they, they need a right-handed power hitter. I don't think the guy in right field is enough for our ballpark to be effective. Uh, and of course, uh, Ortiz goes down. You saw after he left, there was nothing. And they played, they played uh, the lineup played every day. The three guys hit uh, less than two-thirds. Who are you going to be you know, doing that? Not, not very well. Yeah, I do. I think I think uh, they'll overpay for Ross. I think for his where they will because he had a pretty decent year, and Ortiz has got him over a barrel because once he left, there was no punch in the lineup. How do you think they'll perform coming off the injury? I think he'll be all right if, if the medical uh, doctors say he's all right. He'll be all right. So, you know, he got in good shape finally after three years. He got in good shape. Critical because two years before that, uh, he was out of shape, couldn't run first to third, couldn't score from second base. But last year, he got in pretty good shape and he ran much better. And he had a hell of a year. What other free agents do you think? Wow. Uh, yeah, no, they, they talk about the kid from Texas, but uh, they've got enough left handers in the lineup, right? You have to look at a, a, a ballpark that's made for power right handed hitter. We, 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 but in six lefties uh, many times up there. So what right hand do you think we should go after? Uh, hitting? That's a good question. I gotta think about I don't know all the rosters. You know, too well right up. Uh, I don't know the national they're talking about they want to get uh, worth bad, even though he had a bad season. They want to get worth. Uh, yes, they're, they're looking at, at him. Uh, there'll be some others will crop up and I I'm not this point known right off the top of my head. So it's a red-handed power bat that they can do in the side lineup? Oh, one of them. I think one of them. They need a starting pitcher, obviously. Yeah. And as far as the other the other positions, uh, I, I think they needed a catch even when Baratek was here. There was nothing startling about him. They just had such a great ball club. Uh, our, our catching uh, is pretty sad as far as that's Salsa Lamaki had it. 20, 25 home runs, struck out 175 times. Do you think he uh, does any way he keeps that? That's all depends. Uh, it all depends now what type of manager you get. Are the coaches going to stay? My guess is a bunch of coaches are, are going to be let go. Because I don't think they'll make another mistake at the, as they did this year with Bobby Valentin. Bobby didn't, didn't pick any of the coaches. He came and inherited all these guys. Some he didn't know. Some he didn't get along with in any way. And so if they get the right manager, he'll want to bring some of his own guys. Now whether the hitting coach uh, uh, help, helps him, uh, again, I don't know. I was surprised he didn't do much with Langway. You know, I think the shortstop is just not strong enough for some reason. He's a wonderful failure. Yeah, we have another shortstop in the farm systems in their boat. Uh, it's a very uh, Nothing except he's one of the prospects that we're going to have. For the future, but in this town, you got to win now. You got to win now, unfortunately. What do you think about the managerial search? Who do you think is the next manager? Well, you know, they're all talking, as you all know. You read the papers, and we all read the same names. They want the guy from Toronto, but he hasn't done anything in two years up there either. Unless he's going to come back, and uh, you know, they, I, I, I think my personal opinion, which means nothing, but I think the the ownership wants to somehow resurrect those seven, eight years we were all going, everything going our way, and Francona was doing no wrong, and everybody was hitting, and everybody was fielding, and everybody was happy, and we won a lot of games. I think they want to do something like that. You know, whether they're going to be successful, I don't know. What do you think about the idea of bringing the better second way field back, not necessarily the Well, if I were Charrington, I'd look over my shoulder a little bit, you know, because the assistance of the GM, those jobs, uh, I don't know what they're going to have them to do. 
Uh, they're very well liked players. Mr. Henry likes both guys. In fact, uh, Wakefield was always, and uh, I heard this a few years ago, when he signed a low cut contract about three years ago, uh, he was promised a job in the organization if he got through uh, uh, pitching. So he'll be around for a while. He'll be around. All right, well, thank you very much, Mr. Lepsey. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you back. Okay. Uh, next, we're going to have the Dead of Youth Baseball coaches from the Summer League teams. Before you go any further, I'd like to congratulate these guys. Here, I was talking to the players here and a few around there, but I'll tell you, my grandson plays for 12-year-olds uh, with this group mostly, and they got outstanding coaches there. And I tell you, I think they've performed uh, a great amount of good, and the sacrifices these guys make, you guys, you ought to appreciate these guys going out there doing what you're doing with, with you, because they do a tremendous job. I know watching my grandson play on his team, uh, they do a tremendous job, and my hat's off to you guys, let me tell you. Thank you. Now, can we have all of you guys introdu introduce yourselves? Um, Dan Marr, I'm one of the coaches on the 11th. I'm uh, Andy Shumway, I'm the coach of the 11th. Uh, Mike Noski, coach of the 9s. Vinnie McCary, coach of the 9s. Dan Kaiser, coach of the 14s. Joe Hamilton, coach of the 14s. John Leonard, coach of the 9s. Mike Gelati, coach of the 14s. Mark McDonald, coach of the 14s. Thank you, coaches. Now, how did this uh, the summer seasons go? <laughs> um, I think it was uh, probably the most successful year at Denham Youth Baseball's had. Three district four champions, uh, two state champions uh, who appeared in, in New England. So it was a, it was a great year for Denham Youth Baseball. Now you managed the Cal Ripken tournament. How did uh, how'd you get that to come to Dedham? Um, well, I, I've been with uh, with Andy here with the 11 year old team for, for three years. So we after well, four years. We started when they were eight, and just in playing the, the various tournaments that they've gone to, um, you know, we saw a lot of things that worked well, and we saw some things that, that maybe didn't work as well at some of the sites. Uh, and we felt that we could we could host a tournament here in Dedham, uh, and we, we were granted the opportunity to host the District 4 tournament for the 9-year-olds and the 11-year-olds. So what's the future hold for you, Coach? Are you going to stay with baseball or uh, take it to the dance floor? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am one of the Dancing with the Dedham Stars, and uh, I'm a, a better baseball coach than a dancer, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> coach Shumway. What do you like coaching better, Denim Youth Baseball or uh, your job at Nobles coaching? Uh, when it gets paid for. That's right. No, actually, I, I stepped down recently as the varsity coach of Nobles, so not that that says that I enjoy Denim Youth Baseball more, but uh, I do like the, the age group. I like the fact that they're teachable. I like the fact that they do have you know a lot to learn and they're eager to learn. And I also love the fact that the program itself has been growing for a number of years. I remember specifically when these guys were nine, watching the 14s when they were 12 in Norwood. I remember it perfectly. I remember they looked huge then and they look even huger now. Um, but I think the coaches over here seeing those guys play really, you know, helped them step up the game and carry through and want to perform well. And, What's it like being a coach with your son on the team? I think I like it. I I can guarantee you he doesn't like it. <laughs> I think you know. I think it's common knowledge that the uh, the coach's kid gets the, the worst of it. Um, but I think you know. I, I know that he tries hard. I know that he, you know, for the most part, he knows that I'm that I'm coaching him, not just yelling at him. But uh, you know, it, it's really no different. Once we step out on the field, he's just he's just another player. Um, and he's, you know, he's supposed to work hard, and he does. What's it like being a head coach? I think, you know, to be honest with you, I think the, the way that, you know, Dan and I have worked together for a while, as well as Mike, you know, the three of us, um, and our philosophy sort of surrounding coaches has always been, you know, I may have the, you know, I may be the head coach, but it's, it's a definite team aspect. You know, we collaborate on everything. Those things, you know, that came up in the districts in very critical moments when we had to, you know, we sort of 
talked together and figured it out and went with the, the majority, whether that was my my leaning or not. But usually it was these two, and I just went along with it. So, but it worked out well. I think coaching together is the best way to go. Thank you very much, Coach Noski. What's it like to be a Denim Youth Baseball Champion, winning coach? Uh, being able to say that you were the first to win a state championship, uh, that's something that these boys and girls will hopefully they'll remember forever. Uh, doing what we did and how we did it, coming from behind, coming out of the losing bracket to win the states, um, just goes to show that all the hard work they put in, um, it does pay off. And giving up most of their summer, coming to practices, staying late, getting extra work in, it pays off. It's something hopefully that they will remember forever. I mean, the moms and dads took videos, they took pictures, they took. So it'll always be there for them to remember. What do your practices consist of? <laughs> uh, a lot. A lot. Um, <laughs> we had help from a lot of parents this year, not just the coaches, John and Vinny. Uh, but we had parents that would come to practice and help out, which was one of the keys to, I think, how well we did. Uh, we could separate the kids into groups. And we got a lot done at our practices. Um, they all work out, which is the most important thing. Uh, nobody gave anything less than their best. Some best are better than other best, but they all gave their best. Um, our practices are usually pretty quick, they're pretty intense. Um, once we get into a routine, <coughs> we like to get in, get our work done, and go. Coach McGarry, you're a coach of both your son's teams. What's it like being a coach for two teams at the same time? <coughs> He's a third one, too. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, it's difficult. It's, it's, a, it's a struggle at some times, but it's almost like you, you don't want to say no to one of them. And maybe, you know, it's like, geez, you know, this, kid, you know, this team's going to the state championship. Do I leave that team and coach my uh, the youngest son? So it's, it's, it's difficult. It's, it's a struggle at some times. But, you know, now I try to be an assistant coach and help out the team there. You know, that's the way I, I work. And at some point, I think my oldest son, Have you been put into that situation before? Yeah, I was. Where you've had to leave one field yes. or another? Yeah, all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm halfway off one field and on the other field. It's, uh, yeah, it happens all the time. You miss some, you know, good plays. You try to tell the kids, no, I saw it. I mean, they know you can see it. But it's, you know, it's part of, you know, we all have multiple sons. You know, Mike's coaches, you know, multiple teams, his daughter. And, you know, it's just things you have to do. You try to you fit it all in. Do they ever uh, play the who's your favorite card when you leave their game? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, uh, yeah, they know how to manipulate. Yeah, they, they can do that. Yeah. Right, thank you very much. Coach Leonard, you have the same uh, same thing. You have two sons that play. How hard is it for you to keep up with both of them? It's a sign. Um, I coached my oldest case on for uh, two years, and I thought he was a sign back to the um, it's hard, but it's, it's great. It's great to be with them and know that I'm there for them. How did this uh, this summer go? To the mm -hmm. It was awesome. Great experience. How did uh, all the kids do it, like individually? Well, not individually, but like as a team. Mm -hmm. They were awesome. Mm -hmm. It was just a great batch of kids to coach, to play with, um, to watch them. Mm -hmm. They were awesome. Coach Hamilton, what was it like uh, helping out going to go to the state championship for the Philippines? Oh, it, was, it was definitely uh, an honor to be coaching these boys. But, uh, you know, I've been coaching a few years, and I had some great coaches with me, obviously. Uh, rest around if you ask me. But uh, the work ethic that these boys put in, the time and effort they put in on their own, not just they go down on the field on their own all the time, each and every single one of them with the time and the work and the effort. And uh, that alone for me, See the work they put in me, we want to work hard for them. And it, it was a great ride. We just had a great time. And it was awesome all the way around. What's it like having your son on the team? Uh, I enjoy coaching Steven. Um, it, it's much easier to, you know, like I said, I'm say, Steven, it's not always best coming from your dad, even though he's a coach. So, I'll, you know, Coach Kaiser will give him a nudge and say, you know, pick up on that Coach McDonald. Hey, did you see that? You know, he did work on me. 
but it, it works. It's definitely a group effort from the coaches. It's great. Coach Kaiser, what's the difference between coaching Babe Ruth in the spring and uh, summer? Coaching Babe Ruth in the spring and the summer? Uh, <laughs> coaching the Indians and then coaching summer? <laughs> <laughs> uh, a little different. Uh, you know, we got, we got some horses over here uh, in the summertime. But the difference is no different. I go to the same philosophy. I go to the Indians that I go to the summer league. I try to teach it the same way that I teach it. I try to teach it the best I can, and hopefully everyone picks up on it. And I try to just give back to uh, the game of baseball that I love. And I do it the same way to each team. What are some of the points you try getting across when you are coaching? Fundamentals, and to not take the game for granted, and to make sure to uh, do everything to the best of your ability, and whatever you put into the game is what you're going to get out of the game. Right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Coach Guilarde, what was it like watching this boy, these boys journey this summer? <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I mean, they, uh, they competed. They competed really well. And uh, like Coach Hamilton said, they put a lot of work in on their own, and it's uh, rewarding to see that those efforts paid off. And, uh, and I just enjoyed it. it it's good baseball. I mean, these, these guys can play the game. Just look at them. Uh, I, mean, I like coaching them when they were 10. I was bigger than them. And, uh, <laughs> it all changed. But uh, it, it's, it's a lot of fun seeing the game and how these guys are learning how to play it the right way. All right. Thank you very much. Coach McDonald, your, uh, your son Connor has been out of baby for a while. What do you keep bringing you back to coach, even though you have no kids in that system? Well, I get, a, I get a real charge out of seeing kids improve, and uh, you know, it's a, and it's selfish way it keeps me on the field too. You know, um, I love the game. I grew up uh, playing the game since I was, you know, four years old or something. And uh, you know, we start in February and we just ended now. It's so probably like we're doing a couple of fall ball teams. Uh, you know, so we're, we're playing eight, nine months out of the year. So. Um, I guess in a selfish way, that's what it is. It keeps me on the field too. But I really love to see, uh, you know, the kids get into the game and improve and, uh, and believe in their coaches and what we're trying to do with them. It's uh, it's rewarding that way. And you know, for, for them to have the success that they had this year is uh, it's a tribute to their work ethic. What's your favorite season to coach in? Spring, summer, or fall? Uh, that's a tough one. Whatever season's going on, Jack. <laughs> I, I really, you know, nothing can compare to what happened this summer, obviously. Uh, but I'll tell you, I really like the fall league, too, because uh, what we're doing is we're taking 12 year olds that will be on the big diamond next year and getting them green. So they, you know, if you can teach them all the basic fundamentals of the, of the big diamond, then I, I really like that one. All right, well, thank you very much, coaches. Thanks, Jack. No. All right, uh, one last uh, random question for the younger coaches. Well, n not younger, but the younger <laughs> age coaches. <laughs> <laughs> the younger age coaches. So, uh, back row and Coach Lunders. Who's your favorite umpire? Jack Moran. Jack Moran. Jack Moran. <laughs> <laughs> All right, when we come back, we're going to be with the nine-year-olds, talking to a couple of their players. What happened? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Get the child to like, try and tape you. Okay, try and tape you. Mom, get this. Whatever. Try and tape you. Hold on, honey. <laughs>